essentially every problem and model that you uh, throw at a problem is going to involve some amount of uh, decision making with respect to what your parameters are going to be, your hyperparameters, that is. Typically, we think of this as just a uh, search process. Uh, in, in, the, in some cases, and especially in the beginning, you won't have good intuition as to what good parameter sets are for a particular class of problems. But over time, you'll actually start to achieve some uh, sense of what good places are, at least to start a search. Um, you're, you're probably never going to uh, know exactly how to set hyperparameters uh, for a new problem. Uh, but at least you'll know uh, where where those hyperparameter values are likely to live. Some of the algorithms that we talked about already, so your lasso and ridge regression, address a single hyperparameter. They have a single hyperparameter. The, so, so the search problem then becomes one of just sitting on a, a number line. And it's typical for us to establish a range of uh, values to search. And, and then we search using some uh, choice of spacing. In my lab, we tend to use an exponential uh, type of spacing, uh, but one can also use a regular type of spacing. All right, in our, in our case of our ridge regression, we have this uh, lambda parameter, for example. There's our, our number line, and one can uh, imagine uh, making a choice uh, of, say, uh, a point here, and, and you actually saw me uh, playing, say, at point zero zero uh, one for uh, for lambda, uh, and then making a choice of a factor of ten higher, uh, point zero uh, zero one, and from there, of course, this is not going to be entirely to scale. Uh, another choice of point one and on down the line uh, from there. So one might sit way out over there. A Another possibility is, is to do that regular spacing. So that, that involves just working on the grid that's already here. So I might make a, a choice here, and then a, another choice here, and another choice uh, four spaces down, uh, et cetera. So the, the exponential uh, choices are, uh, are usually very good at covering a very wide range very quickly. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit more uh, detail. Um, but first, I, for each one of these choices of, of model uh, hyperparameter, uh, the, the process is we're going to uh, train up a model, and then we'll measure performance Um, with respect to our a, a validation set. And what I can end up with in this in this lambda picture, I might uh, for example, let's let's plot that performance. So this Performance might be with respect to mean squared error for very small values of lambda. We might we might end up uh, over here. Uh, as we start to increase lambda, we might improve performance uh, such such that mean squared error drops uh, at this point in time. For if we're talking about ridge regression, then it's typical for performance then to asymptote. Uh, at some point, it is going to make a turn upward. So by the time we hit a value of one out here, we might end up starting to hit back upwards. As that lambda parameter gets bigger with the ridge regression, we tend to make shallower and shallower uh, functions. And, and at some point, we, we end up with a constant function. So performance will not be very good in that case. We can sort of interpolate, uh, interpolate a, a curve here. And, and this, what I've drawn here, is sort of that ideal uh, scenario where, uh, where this, this point here is at least apparently the, the best choice for our 
a hyperparameter uh, uh, selection. Um, once we've, it, with this exponential spacing, once we've uh, discovered that this is a reasonable place to be and this here and this here are not reasonable places to be, then one could engage in another level of search where we, uh, where we say do a regular uh, search right around this, this particular point here. And, and by doing that, uh, that more focused search, we can uh, really fine tune our choice of that lambda parameter. Another possible case with our choice of parameter uh, might look something like this. I have my lambda here and, and again, say mean squared error along the, the vertical. A, a very, if my search goes from here to, to here and my performance does this, well, let's actually not draw the curve in. Let's just draw points in here. So my performance might, might do something uh, along uh, these lines here. Um, the, the problem with this type of a scenario is that um, out here, this is clearly the best of what we've tried, but we don't know uh, for sure what happens off to the right-hand side. So this is one of those scenarios where uh, if you discover that it's happening, you want to uh, increase the width of your search so that you're trying out something in, in this vicinity here. You, I, I would, if you're using exponential spacing, I would continue out using that spacing out to the right-hand side, uh, but you could also start engaging uh, regular spacing around this point here. You just might um, burn a, a, a few, uh, you might burn quite a few extra CPU cycles doing that. So watch out for those edge effects and, uh, and, and make sure that uh, you're extending your searches as appropriate. Okay, so this is just a, a summary of those points I was making about uh, spacing. Exponential spacing is all about covering a really wide range. And this is really good for uh, scenarios where you just have no idea what the hyperparameter should be. Uh, and it gives you an opportunity really to uh, quickly narrow down uh, the, the, the right region of uh, values. We tend to work in factors of 10, uh, but as we start to narrow down parameters, you might go down to factors of two uh, or even drop into regular spacing. Regular spacing is really much more about fine tuning your hyperparameters than anything else once you have a really good idea as to what the right region is. Uh, and it really focuses on uh, covering a, a narrow range. Okay, so the, so the single hyperparameter is, is a, a nice, easy way to visualize what's going on. Uh, for, uh, but, but the majority of models that we'll actually deal with, you'll have multiple hyperparameters. And, and one of the things that makes this uh, hard is that the hyperparameters generally interact with one another, i.e. They're, they're not independent. So a choice of one depends on the choices you've made for, uh, uh, on other hyperparameters. So what this means is we can't conduct a search in, in an independent way. I can't uh, search along one line for one hyperparameter, and then when we fix that, then we move on to the next one, uh, et cetera. Uh, we actually have to imagine uh, all, all the combinations of hyperparameter values. So, so the approach for this is that for each of our hyperparameters, uh, it has its own set of values that we're going to test in our search process. Again, we can be using exponential or regular spacing for this. Uh, and then we uh, try the Cartesian product of all possible, uh, of all of those choices. M meaning we, we try all combinations of, of choices across those hyperparameters. So for our elastic net model that we were working with, we had actually a grid of choices so we still had our lambda parameter, but then there was also this R parameter that varied between zero and one. And uh, it talked about the balance of L1 versus L2. 
So for, for lambda, we might still have an exponential type spacing. So here versus here versus uh, here versus here, et cetera. Oops, let's not. There we go, that's more exponential. For, for R, because it is constrained between zero and one, we might actually just make a choice of a, of a regular grid here. So, so what we mean by Cartesian product is that, is that we're going to select points where all of these uh, intersect with one another. So this point here, and then the same grid of possibilities uh, for that choice of lambda, and that just continues from there. Okay, as, as you can see, this starts to get uh, quite uh, big quite quickly. And for each one of these circles, we're going to train a model. So again, uh, for, each, for each combination, we're going to train a model and measure performance. And again, that's with respect to a validation data set. So one can actually imagine uh, the, this uh, performance as being a function of this combination of parameters, the, the lambda and the r, and that forms a, uh, a surface that sort of comes out of the page here. Um, so we might, uh, we might end up, if we're thinking about uh, mean squared error still, uh, we might end up with sort of, I, ideally we, we sort of have a bowl type, a bowl type shape and drop into another. So, so here's the back of the bowl here uh, and then, uh, and, and then uh, it comes up on the side. So here we've got this nice bowl uh, type shape, uh, and ideally we've sampled, uh, say, this this point uh, here in that uh, uh, in that space. So this dimension here is lambda, and um, this dimension here is our 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 parameter, uh, and uh, and then this dimension here is performance. So a little bit hard to draw in, uh, in the three dimensions there. Just as with the, uh, the single hyperparameter, we do care about edge effects. So if we don't actually capture the bowl, but instead uh, we, we end up with a scenario where, uh, whoops, iPad is adding things there. Uh, we end up with a, a scenario where, where, where the bowl is, is cut off based on our choices of what range to, uh, to, uh, to search. So the, the bowl might, might have more of this kind of a shape. Uh, and if we imagine continuing to increase uh, lambda from this point that uh, performance might continue to improve. Um, then this is again a scenario where we want to increase the range of possible values that uh, that we want to cover. So this grid, this grid that we drew before, this is just with two hyperparameters, but you can imagine going to uh, three parameters. So we could add a, a new vertical dimension here, uh, where, uh, where where we have yet another parameter, call it gamma. Uh, and in this case, then we are listing all possible combinations of lambda and R and gamma. Uh, and, and so the number of places where we're building models and evaluating them starts to become rather big. Okay, so, so when this number of hyperparameters starts to get large and, and large is maybe bigger than three or four, and depending upon how many parameter values you're testing, you might be able to stretch to five. Uh, it, it starts to get really uh, to the point where we have too many cases uh, to consider all of them. Uh, and this, of course, is contingent on how much CPU time you're willing to, to throw at uh, doing this search process. 
an alternative approach to doing the full Cartesian product of possibilities is, is to take really more of an iterative approach. Um, so, so this approach uh, involves uh, fixing all but say two or three of our hyperparameters. Then we perform a grid search across those hyperparameters and then uh, pick the the hyperparameters that do best of the of those three, two or three, and we and then we hold those constant, and then we pick a, a new subset of hyperparameters and repeat that process. And over repeating that process multiple times, then we can start to home in on a uh, a reasonable choice for uh, the full set of hyperparameters. Just uh, as a way of getting ready to to be drawing other bigger pictures no matter how big of our grid is of hyperparameters, we can always take that grid and unroll it into a single line. And, and that'll become uh, convenient uh, as we go a little bit uh, more forward here. So Scikit-Learn does provide a facility for doing grid search for you. Uh, one of those uh, facilities is called Grid Search CD. So that's a class. This thing takes as input uh, an instance of a model object. So you might have ridge regression, you might have lasso, you might have elastic net. It also takes as input a list of hyperparameters uh, to vary. And, and then for each of those hyperparameters, a list of uh, values to actually try. It then does the full Cartesian product experiment for you. So, so it, it tries every possible uh, combination of hyperparameters, but on top of this, it also uh, performs uh, cross-validation for you. So, so what that means is that for every combination of hyperparameters, we don't have just one model that we're building. We're actually building uh, n different models and computing n different uh, performance metrics for each of those grid points. So, so what this sets us up to do is actually to uh, selection of hyperparameters with respect to the either the distribution of uh, performance values or based on say the mean of, of those performance values. So grid search CV does have its uh, limitations uh, and in particular the the problem is that the training and validation process consumes all of the data that you hand to it. And what this means is that this does not leave us with any independent data for comparing across model types. So this is the, the next level up. Um, the the scikit-learn uh, answer to this is that before we call, say, grid search CV, is, is to take our data set, hold out a piece for doing testing, put it away, and then only give the remaining piece uh, to grid search CV to do its job. The, the problem with this, at least at the surface level, uh, it, it does deliver us an answer as to what a reasonable hyperparameter set is, um, but it doesn't give us a way to ask a, a clean statistical question when we go to compare one type of model to another type of model, because we only have one, uh, one test data set uh, and we will only get one performance metric out of that. So next step, what we're going to do is a quick example of using grid search CV in Python, but, uh, but now we're ready to, uh, to take the step into building a more holistic cross-validation type of an approach.